y'all already know what it is jay williams let's live life and we're back so i get a lot of requests i get a lot of questions and for 99.9 percent .9 of the questions i have answers somebody asked me did you ever meet guys that the guards feared that if they were provoked, they wouldn't even fight with. That they were completely you know, afraid of. Yes. But, let me explain this to you. Them guards, they run those prisons. People say they don't. Now, the inmates run the prison. If the inmates ran the prisons, nobody would be in there. If the inmates had as much power as everybody claims they do, they would just walk up. Grab the chain link fence, pull it down, and leave. You're talking institutions that got thousands of inmates there all day, all night, and a handful of guards, maybe a hundred. And you want to tell me the inmates run the prison? The inmates run things when the guards aren't looking. But in reality, they don't run shit. When you're told to lock down, you lock down. When you're told to go eat, you go eat. You don't go to commissary before you're supposed to go. You don't go to visitation until they let your people in. They run it. But there are indeed some guys, some scary ass guys. And when I mean scary, I don't mean they're afraid. I mean guys that scare other, other men, guys that scare the guards. There are some guys that run shit. There are some guys that put the fear of God in these correctional officers. They come to work. With one goal, and that's to get home safe. I think that is every correctional officer's job across America. We all know their job is to keep people in there, to look over them while they're in there, to make sure everybody's not doing things they shouldn't be doing. But their main task at hand is to get home safe. Now, when you're dealing with a man that's twice your size, you're a 19-year-old correctional officer, 20 years old, just started this job, you're a rookie, a green bean. Oh, Jimmy Greenhorn, Sammy Sausage head ass dude. You just started this job. Ain't never really been in no conversation in your life, fresh out of high school. And a man that's 280 pounds, six foot five, towers over top of you and says, Shut up, punk. What you gonna do? I can tell you what you're gonna do. You're either gonna take it or you're gonna get on your radio, call for more guards, and you're gonna step back and watch the bigger guys. Step in, or you can watch the riot squad step in, the goon squad, the men in black. Today, we're gonna get into some of them situations I saw, and some of the guys I know that would get up in them guards' faces, and them guards wouldn't do nothing. You know, it always ends bad. So, we're gonna get into what happens when these dudes decide to snap, how it goes down. <laughs> you know, I'd have seen it, you know, I don't lived it. So, let's relive it. In my stories, I've told you about a lot of different guys. Crazy L fighting an entire goon squad. Throwing boiling hot water on them as they come through the door. Short dog beating up a female guard, Sergeant Bass, which after he broke Sergeant Bass's arm, she became Lieutenant Bass. Big E would back them police down like they were nothing. He would get them guards' faces and them dudes would tremble from fear. Tweet, big Tweety. I seen Tweet do things that he get caught by the guards and the guards would be like, kind of like look the other way, like shit. I don't want to be the one to try to take him into custody or put handcuffs on him. This big son of a bitch snaps out, and they kill me in here. There's a whole lot of dudes I met that would put the fear of God in them guards and would end up handing them their asses when they were looking for it. Big dude I know, and I'm gonna leave his name out because he may be back out in the streets. But we're just going to call him Big K. He's got a name. Last name starts with a K. First name starts with a L. So anybody that was locked up in the, in the state of Virginia, if you could think of big dudes with the first name starts with a L and the last name starts with a K, then y'all know who I'm talking about. K is a big, massive man. For the most part, you didn't have no problems with him. Unless he needed something and he felt disrespected. He did not like correctional officers. K started getting locked up around the time crack hit the streets. When crack got real big, he said he started off hustling crack. He said, man, I was one of them dudes from the movie that had it all. Had the big gold chains. 
had the truck with the with the the Jeep with the gold rims. He said, man, I was really living that life, man. Like crack made me like almost rich in a couple months, man. He said, but like a lot of guys back then, we looked at crack like it was coke. Like it was, you know, people have this misconception that if you snort cocaine, you're better than somebody that smokes crack. When it's it's pretty much the same drug. It is the same drug. You got the base. It's just cocaine. You know, you cracks that got more addictive powers to it than, than cocaine, but they're both highly addictive. But what I'm getting at is back then, even dudes that were balling started smoking crack. Everybody hadn't got on to the fact yet that, you know, ah, oh man, he's a crackhead. He's going to end up losing everything behind this drug. He said that's what would happen. He said in due time, he went from having all this money within a couple of years later, being flat broke, nobody wanted to give him any any coke to sell, crack, to, you know, to get rid of because they knew he was getting high. He was like, so I was pretty much cut off when it came to the drug game. I said, yeah. He said, so I go to, I start robbing dudes. He said that would be my first trip to prison, huh? Robbery, robbing dope boys. Now all these dudes, here's here's the, the crazy thing about the projects and places like this. You can go out there. And rob all night long. Rob everybody. But you rob somebody and hurt somebody and the police get called. They're going to report the money you took out their pocket. They're not going to tell them, oh, well, you took two ounces of crack and $5,000. Nah. Big dude came over here, roughed me up, put a gun on me, beat me down. Took my money out of my pocket. Now, K had shown me a bullet wound in his back. Said he still had a bullet lodged in his back. Doctors told him it's safer just to leave it there than it is to take it out. So he had like this knot on his back where this bullet had been stuck for, I don't know, could have been there most of his life, right? In and out of prison, he goes. He told me, when I wasn't smoking that crack, Jay, I was a good dude, man. Huh? He said, I had, you know, lots of dudes around me, friends. I was good with my family. I was a normal guy. He said, but I would always end back up smoking them rocks, smoking them jibs, back on the giblet, hitting the glass dick, back on the pipe, smoking them Rizox. He said, as soon as, I, as soon as I get a taste of it, it's over. The beast in me comes out. I'll spend what money I got on it. And when I, when I run out, either dudes are going to start giving it to me, fronting it to me, knowing I'm not going to pay it back, or I'm starting to rob people. I'm going to go down there and he said, I'm going to grab one of these little son bitches in the project. I'm going to turn him upside down and shake his pockets out. K was a big man. Not big in the aspect of just, oh, he's big. He was a big ass man. Looked like he could have been a linebacker. Could have stepped on any WWE stage as just this rough and tough black man that you can look at and tell, he's done a lot of prison time. He spent a lot of time in the streets. And without him even opening his mouth, you can look at him and say, that man will hurt you. That's a violent man. I see a situation in there. He went through the whole story of he keeps coming back to prison behind robbing people, behind his crack addiction he's got. When I meet him, I've heard his name. His name rings bells. Nobody for me to worry about. I'm not somebody that gets on the radar of dudes like that. He more or less, if he needed something, he would go ask somebody. And if you acted funny about it, he would take it. So if you come to yourself, it's like, hey, man, I'm doing bad. Let me get two soups. Not let me hold, meaning he's going to pay it back. Let me get two soups, meaning can I have two soups? You tell him no, he's the type of dude that'll be like, what? Come in there and just gather all your stuff up. You little greedy son of a bitch. Turn around and leave out. K had authority issues. He'd done so much time in prison. You would think for most of the old heads and the dudes that have been there a long time and in and out, they know the last thing you want to do is argue with the guards. They know you don't want to draw heat on yourself. You know, keep the guards out of here. The dorm runs good. The pod runs good. The building runs good. We don't want the guards in here. Kay sitting on his bunk one day, and they come by to do count. And the guard tells him, stand up for count. What I got to stand up for? You can see I'm in here. Look, man, that's the policy. You got to stand up, turn the light on. Both of the inmates in the cell got to have their feet on the floor, and you need to be standing up. I'm not standing up. Look, you're going to stand up for count. I said I'm not standing up. You see I'm here. When you think the other half of me's out there walking free in the world, I'm right here, man. What the fuck I got to stand up for? Okay, you're right. Don't sleep far from me. I hear the whole thing. I said, man, they're going to write this dude a charge, right? They're gonna, somebody's going to write him up. They don't give him no charge. No charge ever shows up. If a guard writes him up, 
Knives ain't got on this man's bad side. K has done hurt dudes in the past in prison. K has robbed dope boys that were gang members in the past in the prison. Took the whole pack from them and just been like, what? What are y'all going to do? Just like Tweet would do. What are you going to do? Y'all ain't going to do nothing. You send 10 of y'all over here, I'm going to slam 10 of y'all on y'all's neck. I'll kill you little son of a bitches, right? K's a big violent man. The place I was at at the time, we couldn't keep guards up there. The guards... You would see a guard for a couple months, and then that guard would quit. The guard would get fired. The guard would get caught doing something they shouldn't be doing. They wouldn't be able to take the stress. They would be fighting. The coworkers, the guards would be going at each other because you got some guards that got higher positions that want these ones to do all the work and are lazy, and they just, they would clash all the time. I told you, Kay's not standing for counting, huh? I've seen Kay get in the police's face before and the guards' faces before and be like, do something. And they literally, you can tell, they're scared to death. This is an everyday average citizen standing there with a CO's uniform who's been through basic training, who ain't never been punched in the face, much less punched in the face by King Kong. K still refusing to stand for count. With these guards still switching off, these guards that work these average shifts, they know K ain't going to stand. He's going to sit there. And ain't nothing we can do to get him to stand. If we put him in the hole, bring him out, wherever he goes to, he's going to be their problem. And then if we run across him, he's going to be angry that we put him in a hole. So just leave him alone, man. Don't make him stand up for count, right? We get a new sergeant. And when I mean, he's like, he's like a drill instructor. Dude is a big dude. He's one of the, probably one of the biggest sergeants I had ever seen up there. This man came on as a correctional officer and within a matter of months was sergeant. Like, he went straight up the ladder, and I think a lot of it had to do with his military background. He was very militant. The way he dressed, his clothes stayed creased and ironed. The haircut he had when he took that 10-gallon hat off, you would see his haircut, high and tight, you know, military cut. One of the biggest COs that ever crossed that compound. And when I seen him, this dude had a chip on his shoulder. He wasn't for no small talk. He wasn't for helping you out. If you ran out of toilet paper, hey, Sarge, can I get a roll of toilet paper? What do I look like? The store? Not my job to give you toilet paper. You was given toilet paper again in the week, figured out, wipe your ass with a sock. And you better not flush it down my toilet. If it gets clogged up my toilet, I'm going to write you a charge. He would say shit like that to people. We're short an officer one day, and the sergeant comes around with the officer. Sergeants usually don't do count. The regular officers do. Sergeants walk around with the officer, and they get the case cell. And the one officer looks in. Sees K sitting on the bunk. The dude on the top bunk keeps moving. The sergeant looks in. Sees K sitting on the bunk. Hey, you need to stand up. I ain't standing up. Inmate looks at the roster. Such and such. You need to stand up for count. I'm not standing up. Oh, you going to make me get this door pop? I hear K jump up off the bunk, run to the door. And what the fuck you going to do when you pop the door, huh? What you going to do when you come through here? You ain't going to do shit. Sergeant says, okay. I got something for you. Don't worry about it. We'll be back. Now, after they do count, they got to wait for count to clear. Waiting on count to clear consists of they've walked around with this piece of paper with all the inmates that are in the cells, how many inmates it is. The reason there's two officers doing it so that if one officer's numbers is wrong, the second officer catches it. Once they account for everybody that's there, all right, 3,700 inmates, 3,700 present, nobody has escaped. They're all there. You can let them all back out their cells, right? You hear them come over to intercom. Count is cleared at zero such and such hundred hours. Count is now cleared at zero such and such hundred hours. I know these doors ain't about to pop. With the comment the sergeant made, they're getting ready to come back and they're going to try to take Big K's ass to the hole. Sure enough, about 15, 20 minutes passes by. And dudes, other dudes, hey, pop the doors. They're yelling to the control dude. Control booth, pop the doors, man. Let us out these cells. It's hot. Count cleared. Let us out the cells. Officer in the booth don't say nothing. She's not going to give you no explanation. She's not going to say, hey, Sergeant said to keep you on lock. We got a situation. They just sit in there and look around like they're dumb. Just not going to say nothing. Going to let the sergeant do what he does. I'm waiting on this goon squad, this task force, all the men in black with shields to come through the door. Sergeant comes back with another officer, another bigger officer. They come up to K's cell and tell K, turn around and cuff up. K tells him, not cuffing up. You disobeyed the direct order, you go into the hole, pack your shit, turn around and cuff up. He tells him, I'm not going to the hole and I'm not cuffing up. Not happening. Come in here and put me in cuffs. Open the door and put cuffs on me. 
These are two big men. These are men that when I stand in front of, I got to look up like this. Like the sergeant was just as big as K was, man. He wasn't bigger than K, but he was probably one of the few people on the compound that was as big as K. He just wasn't as crazy as K. He's standing there arguing. Sergeant calls for a couple more officers. A few minutes later, I'm still waiting on the men in black to come in. And I see the lieutenant come in the pod. Lieutenant's down in another building. He hears the inmate's name come across the radio, who they're having issues with. Comes in, pulls the sergeant off to the side. I don't know what he said to him. He talked to him in kind of privacy. Lieutenant walked over to where there's still a guard standing by a cell and tells the guard, come on, let's go. And they walk out. I'm guessing the lieutenant told the sergeant, look, you don't know who that is. That's a violent man. Leave him be. At the most he's doing is not standing up during count. Let him be. If that would have been my ass, they'd have had the goon squad in there bouncing knees off the side of my neck. Pepper spray the whole nine. I'd have been balled up like a roly-poly and drug up out of there like luggage. They'd have hog-tied me, zipped me up, picked me up like a piece of luggage. I've had it happen and walked me right out the cell. That would have been the end of it. They'd have beat the shit out of me and left. With K, whatever the lieutenant said to the sergeant, not only pissed the lieutenant, pissed the sergeant off, but it just made him look stupid in front of everybody. It just showed him that K can get away with whatever he wants in here. Now when the sergeant comes through, he don't say nothing to K. And K's not one of his ones, one of the ones that's going to go out of his way to cause problems. But now he does not like the sergeant. He's told other people, he's got one more time to say something to me, base up on me, and I'm going to beat his big ass. Watch what I do to him. I'm going to make an example out of him. Ain't nobody here going to carry me. Been in and out the penitentiary my whole life. They act like they run shit. I run this shit. This is my house. K had a habit of going to other buildings when he needed food, where he had homeboys, dudes that owed him. He would go down there to extort people, take things from people. And you'd see Kay walking back from another building to our building with a whole bag of commissary. Kay wouldn't hide it. Most dudes would wear their jacket, cut the inside line, and then stuff the jacket full of soups and sodas and honey buns, whatever it is they got from another building. Kay would just come walking with a big-ass sack over his back like Santa Claus. All the guards that knew him, and even the ones that didn't know him, would take one look at him and be like, I ain't messing with that big son of a bitch. He'd be walking right down the boulevard. Commissary ain't been called. There's no reason for him to have commissary, but there he is with that big-ass sack of food over his shoulder, walking out of a building he don't belong in and back into our building like he owns this bitch. Walk right by the guards and they just look at him. I'm like, how you doing? That man definitely just robbed somebody. He definitely just extorted somebody. He definitely just came out of a building that anybody else would go to the hole for being in. Hey, have a nice day. Go on back in your building, okay? It always ends bad. We're on the wreck yard one day, out there standing at the fence talking, and I look down the, what we call, a, it's a stretch of concrete we call the boulevard, and then you got my building is seven. Then beside that, you got eight building. Then down there, you got nine building. I see K coming out of nine building from a distance. You can't miss him. For even that far off from 300 feet, 200 feet away, you can spot that big son of a bitch, and you know who that is when you see him. It's too big to be anybody else. That's K. He's coming out of nine building. He's walking down the boulevard, and I look over to the right, and I see this big-ass sergeant come out the side of the chow hall door. Now, they're not doing chow, but the sergeant's job is to, he goes around and checks on things. So you got guys in the chow hall prepping food for lunchtime. Sergeant goes in there and makes sure everything's running right. The guards are doing their job overseeing them. Comes out, and he spots Big K, walking with his big-ass bag of food over his shoulders. Hey, come here. K looks at him. Man, fuck you. Keeps walking. Inmate, I said, come here. Fuck you. That's what I said. You heard me. He keeps walking. Now, Sarge puts a pep in his step. Starts walking faster. He's walking behind K. 20 feet. 15 feet. K's nonchalantly walking. Like, I wish this son of a bitch would run up on me. Looks back and sees him and don't pay him no attention like he's not even there. Like he's a fly. Sarge walks up behind K and grabs the bag of commissary and pulls it. And when he does, K lets it go, turns around, grabs his big ass beast of a man up, wraps his arms around and takes him and dumps him into the grass and they go to fighting. There's a difference between watching me and another man fight and watching two men of that size fight. It's like watching Floyd Mayweather and then watching Tyson. Floyd can land a whole bunch of punches and the fight can still go eight, nine rounds. But them dudes like that of that size, those punches they throw in shit real fast. K flips him over in the grass and commences to stroking on him, swinging on him, 
Sergeant Flips K starts giving it back to him. Now they're tussling in the grass. The commissary's laid out all on the boulevard right there. The big ass bag of food just laying there. And there's other officers now running out the building. They got a panic button they can hit on their walkie talkie. And everybody reports to that area. There's officers up there with sword, other officers, the other sergeants, lieutenants, everyday officers can see what's going on. These two big son bitches fight for a good 30, 45 seconds. By the time the officers get out there to help their sergeant, their leader, this big ass dude that tried Big K, K was picking the commissary back up and walking back in the building with it. They ended up calling the goon squad. K went in there, put all the commissary in his cell like he didn't know that he just beat the shit out the sergeant. You are going to jail. Everybody asks, what happens when you put your hands on a correctional officer? You go back to court. You go back to court for an assault charge, for an assault charge on a guard, on staff. You've now caught a criminal charge while you're incarcerated that you're going to be tried for, either in front of a judge or in front of a jury. You're going to stand in front of your peers. You're going to be sentenced to more time, right? K beat the dog shit, punished that sergeant. The difference between them both being the same size and them being the same is that the sergeant was just a sergeant. K was a big violent man who had spent all his life, majority of his life in prison, majority of his time fighting, robbing people, hurting people. And the sergeant's not there with a heart full of anger. The sergeant gets to leave and go home every day. But he didn't follow basic protocol. He should have never touched K. Never in a million years what would cross his mind. I don't know if it was his ego. Maybe he thought his military training was going to was gonna kick in when it came to trying to handle K. Maybe he was going to put K in an arm bar or something. K scooped this, man. You ever seen somebody grab somebody up and then just spin them and dump them? K dumped them and beat the shit out of them. The guards came in there, and I'm thinking, they lock us all down. I'm thinking, K is about to have it out. He's about to go to town with these guards. They showed up to his cell. He told the lieutenant, I told him to stop fucking with me. He got what he deserved. Voluntarily walked himself out of there and disappeared. His name, he is by far probably one of the most known dudes in the Virginia Department of Corrections since as far back as I could probably guess, man. Anybody that knows who he is could tell you that just the thought of having problems with him or seeing him come in your direction in a, in a sense of violence would usually shut most guys down from fighting with him. I didn't know of anybody that ever tried to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Only thing you heard is that if K went at you, you was going to give it up. He ultimately got more time, but I do know that he was released. The place I ended up at after that place, I ended up one of his nephews. Asked me, I heard the dude's last name. I said, oh, you related to such and such? He was like, yeah. I said, man, your uncle is a savage, bro. Your uncle is a maniac. He's like, yeah, yeah, that's that's my uncle, man. That's my people. Start showing me family photos. And there he is, a free man, posted up with the family, not looking like a whole entire psycho, not looking like, you know what I mean, somebody that belongs on, on death row's most wanted list. But yeah, man, Big K beat the shit out the sergeant, punished that man. I like to say that after he got that ass whooping from K, that it changed everything, that he watched the way he talked to people, that he became a better person. He actually became a lieutenant and only got worse. From then on out, he didn't do much talking. He didn't do all the saying things to people that were slick out of his mouth. He was just quick to grab you and handcuff you so that he'd never, ever catch another ass whooping like the one K gave him. We've all seen the movie Friday. Remember Debo? Imagine walking into the cell and Debo being your celly. That was Big K. Imagine that man coming up to you and saying, Hey, can I get two soups off of you? Let me have two soups. I didn't, I didn't know of anybody that wouldn't give the man what he asked for. Not only that, if you see a man hungry, feed him. Man ain't got nothing in his box. You know, he ain't got no means of support from the outside. Whatever's going on, you feed him. With Big K, it didn't matter if he had 5,000 soups in his cell. He just decided he wanted to eat yours. Like Debo coming when everybody tucked their chain in, when he punched Red in his face and took his bike. Yeah. K would have beat Debo's ass, man. He'd have made Debo look like a damn clown. The penitentiary, I'm not going to say it's full of men like K. It's full of violent men. 
there's this big difference between being a violent man and being a big, massive, strong, violent man. There were times I was violent. I met a lot of violent guys. But when you take in, in fact, a six foot five, almost 300 pounds with a heart full of anger and rage and have hurt people more times than you've made happy, that's a dangerous, dangerous individual. A man that he doesn't care nothing about you. He will crack your skull wide open. Watch all your shit leak out right there on the floor and walk off like it never happened. He's not going to lose a wink of sleep over what he did to you. He will watch you scream, squirm, and bleed and draw pleasure from it. No different to him than just sitting down and eating a honey bun and watching TV. I've told y'all before, man, don't commit crimes. You don't have to deal with these type of people. I do hope that he got his life together because from what I heard and what he said, and even his nephew, when he wasn't getting high, he was a good person. But in prison, prison will bring out the worst in you. Prison is not somewhere you go and walk around being better than others or acting like you're better than others or being your best self. You take the bad and create the good and come out and unleash the good. Come out a better person. But while you're there, you're going to have to do what you have to do. Anyways, y'all know it is Friday, Friday, Friday. It is payday, payday, payday. I got to get this money. Got to get the guys paid. Mouth is killing me. We got through the video. And I'm happy about that. You know I love all y'all. Might go live this weekend. Hope all of y'all have an amazing weekend. Had a great week. And for anybody that's going through something, man, hang in there. Anybody that's looking to do something wrong, use your brain. Find another way. Put in applications. Talk to people. Don't take no for an answer. Be consistent. You keep shaking the tree, something's bound to fall. You will find a way. Anyways, these institutions, the detention centers, these jails, these prisons, they're all just crazy worlds inside of this already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life. It's all my real ones. And there are some real ones watching because y'all still watching me. Man, y'all know how we do. Salute. Halloween skis.